So for the Mustang, we need to get a uh, Ford 8.8 rear end. We're gonna get it from a Ford Explorer. They're, you know, the Exploder. Rear ends are great, the rest not so much. So they're all over junkyards. So we're gonna try and find one of those today. Should have plenty here. Okay, so we found two of them in the junkyard. This one is accessible. This one looks like it should be good. And it has the 373 gearing with the limited slip. That is what I want. And it's set up for disc brakes. I'm gonna pop it out, see if uh, the insides are nice and good or not. Yes, nice and good. Uh, make sure the gears are, or the teeth are good. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure the teeth are good. Pull the diff cover and it looks brand new. Doesn't smell bad. And the oil coming out was like a nice golden color. So I think this is it. Got U-bolts uh, that we can't quite get off. So <laughs> brought the, uh, was it Sawzall, Jigsaw, whatever you call them. Uh, so we're just gonna cut through the U-bolts. And then I'm gonna take the e-brake off and I mean the axle should come right out. Boom. There you go. Now I've gotta do the other side. With the help of my buddy Tyrell here, which you've probably seen on my uh, four-wheel drive side, got the axle out. It is pretty heavy. So now we just gotta get it out to the car and head home. It's a little heavy. I got this. Got it in the truck. Now to get it home, put it on some stands, start stripping it, clean it all up, and then it'll be ready for the Mustang. Okay, so the reason why we went and got that Ford 8.8, because .8, it is so much beefier than this uh, seven and a quarter inch. Huge, huge plus, and I think it was like uh, 230 after taxes and the core charge and all that for disc brakes, the axle, limited slip, Man, that is a steal. Yeah, I need to clean it all up now. So I just got off work tonight and I started stripping off this axle here. So I gotta pull those axles out of the housings and let's jump to it. It's kind of hard to see this in here, but there's this one clip right here holding these axles in. There we go. Well, let's just say I'm glad I have these safety glasses on. The uh, blade caught a little bit and just blew apart. So yeah, safety glasses, good thing to have. I hope my neighbors don't kill me, but I got it all trimmed up. It's uh, two o'clock in the morning. Oops, got everything all trimmed off. And as you can see, I cut off the spring perches and the uh, sway bar mounts for it. Time to call it a night, and uh, gotta be up bright and early getting that thing up. There we go. Not the most graceful way to do it, but hey, it worked out. All right, so this guy is dirty. Came out of the junkyard with, I don't even know how many miles are on it, but internals are good, so I gotta make the outside look just as good as the inside. So Super Clean sent me a whole bunch of their uh, cleaning supplies to test out for these projects here, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be spreading it all down completely with the Super Clean degreaser. There's a lot of grease, a lot of grime, a lot of everything on this thing, so I'm just gonna saturate it. Let it sit for a bit, let it do its thing, and then, uh, Come spray it down and see how well it gets rid of all this grime. All right, so now we're just gonna let it sit. Uh, probably let it sit for 15 minutes. I'm gonna clean up the rest of the garage real quick and uh, jump back to this. It should be pretty good. They say it's gonna work really well, so this is putting it to the test for real. So overall, I'm actually really impressed. I did a, did a really good job. Um, 
I just sprayed it down a little bit with the uh, just the soaker, kind of like the, uh, the shower spray. I'm super surprised that cleaned up so much of that grease and oil. I uh, highly recommend uh, that super clean grease dissolve. Yeah, that's uh, I have to use that a lot more. I'm gonna throw some uh, jet spray on it just to see if it does any difference, but. Doing some math here, we got spring outside to outside measured from the car itself. I got 45 and a half inches from outside to outside of the spring. From the inside of the springs, we got 40 and a half inches. So using some math there, I also measured it out at two and a half inches wide per spring. The perches I bought are two and a half inches wide, which is, oh, perfect. So the full width of the axle from the inside of the wheel hub to the inside of the wheel hub is 54 and a quarter inches. Cut that in half, you got 27 and an eighth. Now from the center line, the outside of the spring should sit 22 and three quarters of an inch from the center line to the outside of that spring perch. All right, got my line here. I guess it's kind of hard to tell through the camera. I'm not quite holding it exactly right, but it is measuring out exactly where I want it, four and three eighths inches. To make sure the input is actually perfectly level on here. So now, I'm gonna make sure that they are exactly the right width out and also make sure that they are exactly level. Before I continue any farther, make sure Now ready to weld up fully. We're gonna start welding part of it. I don't wanna warp the tubes, so I'm gonna do like a little bit of weld on either side here. Let it cool down while I mock up the other side, get that ready. Awesome. Now I just finished up welding up the tubes to the third member in the middle here. So now that is going to be a nice tight. It's going to be really good. Nice tight. That's going to be nice and strong. We're ready for action there. Also got the spring perches all welded up. And that's looking nice. So one thing to take note, I know the welds do kind of look bad in some spots. Like they start and stop, which I had to do as you saw. I had to do little sections at a time so I don't overheat the actual tubing itself and start warping that. Before I welded the inside of the spring perches, I double checked made sure my made sure my penetration was good and it was on point. So yep. Time to start spray painting it, clean it all up. And uh yeah, it's almost done. First coat, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to be doing the underside. I got to let this dry before I flip back over to the other side and paint that side. So, I'll let this sit, do a second coat here in a bit, and then, uh, yeah, be able to put some springs on it and uh, throw it on in. So, I got Tyrell here helping me out. We're going to put the leaf springs on. We've got one side mostly done. We wanted to make sure to do that side first before, you know, messing up on camera. So, we're going <coughs> to suck this guy up here for you guys and then probably throw this underneath the, uh, underneath the Mustang tonight. <laughs> so I guess he's doing it me. And just like that. So, now he's gonna put the other U-bolt on. 
And that'll have to hang on to it for 15 minutes like the other one. There we go. So basically, the, the, <laughs> Just <in the> back <laughs> okay, so basically the loose springs are in, uh, I don't have a socket that's going to fit those. Uh, I think it's like a one inch socket. I only have a seven eighths and so I have to go out and get a bigger socket and then tighten these guys all the way up before I throw it right there in the vehicle. All right, time to get these springs out. Uh, like pretty, sure pretty simple here. Now is the moment of truth. Are my measurements originally made from side to side, making sure that axle is dead center accurate? About to find that out. <laughs> well, let's see how well I did. And we are like dead on six inches right there. And right on it. As you can see, that was super, super close. It looked like maybe one sixteenth of an inch difference on there. That is, I mean, from measuring it out there, that is so close. That is gonna be, that is gonna be perfect right there. Uh, I used that straight two by four, which, I mean, right now is worth what three grand. <laughs> Wood prices right now, ridiculous, right? Awesome. So the Mustang has a rear axle finally. I'm excited about that. It looks so good in there. It is the Ford 8.8 .8 rear end. I didn't shorten it, so it is a little bit wider, but because I got the right size offset wheels, I should run 245 tires on there. I'm going to mock it up, figure that out tonight, but I am excited. I'm so stoked. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we're going to see you guys next week.